So I've been using Windows 10 for about a month now, and in this video I'm going to discuss three things I'd like to change in Windows 10. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'd like to change is the thing that you're looking at right now, the Windows 10 lock screen. Now this was introduced in Windows 8, and it's been with us ever since. Now one thing that's commendable about Windows in general is that they're trying to tackle all kinds of input, whether it's mouse and keyboard or touch. They want to optimize the operating system for everything. And I actually think that's a great idea. But the lock screen is something that is only good for touch devices. And the reason it's there is because if you have a phone or a tablet, in your pocket or in a bag somewhere, you don't want inadvertent touches on your device, maybe changing important documents, changing settings, things like that, making phone calls that you don't want to make. So in order to avoid those kinds of things, they institute a lock screen, and pretty much every mobile operating system out there has some sort of lock screen. So it has its place. However, when you have a desktop environment like I do here, a lock screen is 100% unnecessary. So how do you get around that? Well, there should be something in the settings that allows you to disable the lock screen. Now, there is a way to disable the lock screen, but it's not surfaced as much as it should be. It should be right in the settings, but it's not there. So in a future video, in either tomorrow's video or the day after tomorrow's video, depending, I haven't figured out which way it's going to go, but I'm going to show you how to disable the lock screen so you don't have to deal with this anymore. Now you do get a nice picture here, you get a representation of the Wi-Fi in the lower right hand corner, it tells you if you have Wi-Fi or not, you can actually have different notifications here as well, and of course you get your date and time in the lower left hand screen. However, all of that could still be represented on the sign-in screen. Now you don't have to have a sign-in screen if you do not put a password in your Windows device it just bypasses the sign-in screen. So that's something that's optional but this should be optional as well. Now I'm going to hit the enter key on the computer and you see my sign-in screen where you have a little bit more information in the lower right hand corner. I don't know if you can see it. Well yeah you can see it. You have again the representation of the Wi-Fi, you have the accessibility icon, and then you have your power icon where you can actually restart the device or shut it down and whatnot. And then in the lower left hand corner you have all of your sign-ins or all of your user accounts on the device. As far as I'm concerned, this should be the lock screen. It should all be streamlined into this. And of course we get the lock screen because it times out again. So let me go back here. This could have your date and time. You could have like all your notifications on here. And it would make a lot more sense. Right now it's not very streamlined. Fortunately, like I said, you can get rid of the lock screen. And I'll show that to you in a future video. So the second thing I would change about Windows 10 are the live tiles. Now right now I'm doing a screencast for you here so it's easier for you to see. Normally my screen resolution is 2560 by 1600, but I know that wouldn't work for a YouTube video so I actually lowered the resolution on my screen so everything's a little bit larger so you can see it a little bit better. Right now I'm running at 1280 by 800. So hopefully it works out for the screencast, we'll see. But the, the thing that I like to change on Windows 10 are the live tiles. And I think actually think that the live tiles are a good thing. So it's not something that I think needs to go. I think it's something that needs to be modified. Much like the first thing, it's a fixable thing. These live tiles are very interesting. Uh, you can make them actually live, as the name implies. You can have information on them, and it actually shows you dynamic information. So that's actually a good thing. Where it's placed on the start screen down here, not really a huge fan of. I don't find a need for the live tiles down there. Of course you can make this full screen if you would like. You could make the entire screen live tiles, but in a desktop operating system or a desktop environment, I think that it's better the way it is this way. But these areas here of live tiles, there's really no reason for them to be on the start screen here. I think what the next iteration of Windows 10 or whatever the next iteration of Windows should be, 
should have live tiles in the space or at least living alongside desktop shortcuts. So desktop shortcuts have been with Windows forever and they're useful and there's a reason why they're still here is because they're incredibly useful. It's a one click or actually a double click away from whatever program or whatever you want that you want to use on a regular basis. I don't think that the desktop shortcuts should be changed. However, I think that the live tiles could live very easily alongside desktop shortcuts. So instead of having a separate place where you have all of these live tiles, it would be great if you could throw a live tile on your desktop. Now I'm a proponent of choice, so I don't think it should be necessarily one or the other. If you like them in your start menu here, then that's a good thing. But I think that they could live very nicely on your desktop here. It should be an option to put live tiles straight onto your desktop. Sort of like Desktop Shortcuts 2.0. I think they're onto something. I really think they just need to refine this. Now the final thing I'd like to change about Windows 10 is the dumbing down of the operating system. Now, as I mentioned before, I think it's a very good idea and Windows is moving in the right direction to try and straddle all input methods, whether it again is keyboard and mouse or touch. I think an operating system that allows for every kind of input is a really good idea. But as is the case with touch-based operating systems, most notably mobile operating systems, you sacrifice a lot for that touch interface. And it makes a lot of sense because generally touch devices are smaller, the screen is smaller, and the input device, your finger, is much larger. So you have a smaller screen with a larger input implementation. So as it goes, it stands to reason you need larger targets on the screen. You don't want minuscule targets on your screen that are hard to click. You want very straightforward large targets and again, it makes a lot of sense. But because Windows is straddling those two worlds, you end up with your touch-friendly interfaces not giving you as many options as you should. So let's take a look at the Windows settings here. So go into the Start screen, you go into Settings. Now you'll notice that Settings is the most fleshed out part of how to change things on your operating system. Of course there's control panel, but if you're new to Windows, you don't it's not really on on the front, it's not fleshed out easily. You'll have to actually search for the control panel. But let's go to settings here. Now you'll notice all the targets are very large. Again, that's so you can use a mouse and keyboard, but more importantly, so you can use your finger if you had a touch screen on your device here. So for instance, my first issue with Windows was the lock screen. Let's go over to personalization over here and you can see right over here is the lock screen settings. Now the only thing that you can do over here is change the background picture. You can use a picture of anything that's on your you know, computer already. These are the, the Windows 10 default pictures. You can go down here and choose apps to show notifications on your lock screen and you can go to the screen timeout options and screen saver settings down there. But there's no way that you can actually get rid of the lock screen. Again, I'll show you that in the future because you have to really kind of know where to look for it, but there's, there's no easy way to get rid of it. And it should be an option here, but it isn't because everything is kind of dumbed down for the touch interface. Another example of that is the background feature here. Now you'll notice that I have just the stock Windows wallpaper on my computer, but uh, let me just make this smaller so you can actually see the wallpaper back there. If I wanted to change that to something else, that's actually not a good, good example because the wallpaper is kind of vertical and not horizontal, but if I want to change it to one of these other things, I can click on them and change the desktop wallpaper, which is all well and good. Unfortunately, I have two monitors here, and I'd like to have a different wallpaper on each monitor. Now that's something that was introduced in Windows 8, where you could actually, if you had multiple screens, you could put a different desktop wallpaper on each of those screens. And I actually like that, because 
Typically, in my setup, you can't see it right now because I'm doing a screencast, but in my setup, I have a portrait orientation on my secondary monitor and a landscape orientation on the one that you're looking at right now. So, landscape pictures don't show up well on portrait monitors. So, it, it lends itself to having two separate pictures. But over here, again, I'm in the back, background function over here. And the only thing that you can do is choose your picture, whether it's something in a different folder or the folder that's represented here. And then you can choose your options, how you want to tile that image or fill the image or stretch it or whatever. That's it for your background settings. So a lot of these things are dumbed down and it makes sense why they've done it, but there should be an option to dig deeper on these things. And all of these things can be fixed. But again, I think because of Microsoft's desire to straddle both of those worlds, the touch and the mouse interface, they have sacrificed some things here. Now you'll notice the new settings screen here, which was introduced in Windows 8 and of course now in Windows 10, you have again those big targets and whatnot, but the old control panel is still on the computer here. And let's go to it. And you see the smaller targets which were meant for the mouse and keyboard. Now unfortunately, if I wanted to change the appearance of the wallpapers and make them separate wallpapers like I had you know, just described to you, you can't really do that. Uh, you can change the theme. Let me go into the personalization here. You can change themes. Now I have saved themes here where I have two separate images on the two different uh, monitors, but there's no way to actually control it from here. So there's certain things that have been left out even from the control panel on Windows 10 that you really have to know what you're doing and you really have to dig deep for. So it's early days for Windows 10, so there's a lot of room for improvement. They can fix all of these things. Fortunately, I don't think any of these things are deep-rooted problems. For the most part, I think Windows 10 is a good option if you're running Windows. So those are the three things I would change about Windows 10 if I could. What do you think? What would you change about Windows 10 if you could? Let me know in the comments down below. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up, favorite this video, share this video. You can leave me a tip on my YouTube page, or you can actually join my Patreon, all of which would be greatly appreciated. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.